Hello my crafty friends, it's Bevla here over at Crafting Chaos here with another of my floral video series I'm sorry I've not been around for a few days um, I've had a lot on at work because we're getting ready for the holiday and it's now our half term break and I was intending to get back to you over the weekend but unfortunately work overtook me again but hopefully now I'm straight and or as straight as a teacher ever gets when, especially in the holidays and I can afford a little bit of time for crafting now so we're going to be working on the fuchsia file um, which I previewed on Facebook and got some really good um, positive response about that people were actually wanting to see how the file was created. So we'll get straight at it. What I've done is opened Canvas Workspace on the internet version and I'm heading over to Pixabay to find the flower that we need for the tutorial. So what I did in Pixabay was clicked on flower Oh, sorry, I clicked in the search engine, typed flower, and then I chose in the in the images section vector graphics because I'm looking specifically if we can find an SVG. And then I scrolled down until I found the file that I wanted, which has now disappeared. There we are. And it was this fuchsia that I liked the look of. Um, my mother-in-law has a bed of fuchsias and there are a riot of colour in the summer and they're absolutely beautiful and I've always liked fuchsias and her outdoor border just really makes me feel happy when it's summer and I see it all out in bloom. So once I've located the image and you will do the same you'll click on free download. Now you can see the license free for commercial use no attribution required and so I'm taking that's my green light to go so I'm going to click on the options and you can download it in various size PGNs but it's the vector graphic that I'm going to download I'm not going to do it again because I've already downloaded it all you would do is click on that and it would download it either give you the option to download wherever you wish or download to an area of your choice dependent on what you're working on so now I'm going to head back over to canvas workspace and I'm going to bring in that SVG file so I'm going to click on choose file, locate it in my download and click choose. And I'm going to say OK. And that should load up the file on my desktop. It's running a little bit slow. So we'll just have to bear with while it gets completed. I'll say OK. Now it's doing it. I mustn't have clicked it. I was thinking I'd clicked and I hadn't. It is running a bit slow, but there we go. Since the shape was larger than the mat, it's been reduced, so that's fine. It's just saying that it was a really big file and it's made it smaller. <coughs> and I'm going to resize it anyway. So I'm going to go on resize, undo maintain aspect ratio, and I'm going to make it 7 by 5. And I will adjust the size of the images at the end anyway. So 7 by 5 and say OK. And that's what we're up to. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make it a dedicated drawing file. And I'm going to take off the drawing line colour. Leaving us just with the fill. So that is now effectively our digital stamp. And if we view, show the drawing line. That's what it's going to draw. If we zoom in, that's what it's going to draw with our pen. So I'm just going to view and fit to matte. And I'm going to go off that view because it is a bit off-putting. And I think I'm just for, I'm going to make it a nicer colour to look at on screen. And I'm going to make it a brownish colour. But that's for me, not for any particular reason. I'm going to take a duplicate of the file and move it off to the side. So I can close down the properties box, move the duplicate off to the side. And what we need now to do is create an offset. So I'm going to click on the image and go on edit, create an offset line. And I'm going to come out by about 0.12 inches and say OK. And hopefully that will give us a nice outer edge round the file. So we're just waiting for the, it to finish doing its computing and there we have it. Now I've done it bigger than it needs to be purely because it tends to get a better offset initially. What I'm going to do now though, because I don't want it to be 0.12, I want it 0.04. So I'm going to go inwards by 0.08 inches and say OK. So when I move that off, 
you can see now that's smaller and I can delete that one. I'm now going to make a duplicate of this one and I'm going to drag it off to the side. So what we've got now, if I effectively, I'm going to make this a different colour so that it shows up better against the brown and I'm going to click on that one and I'm going to send it to the back. So now what I've got is a spare of each and also the file that I'm working on. So this is where we're up to. So this is the file. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to line everything up for both centrally and horizontally. So now that should be smack in the middle of that file. Now what you can see, it's traced around so that you can cut, draw that out like so. However, it's left a lot of detail in the file. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on the Node Editing system and I'm going to zoom in so that I can get a clearer look at where I'm going and I'm going to be using the node tool and I'm going to draw into some of these spaces where I want to cut some more of the file away so basically I'm going to click where I want to start the file and I'm going to work my way around slowly so that I'm sticking to the perimeter roughly so that it's not touching the the drawing line and then when I get back to the start I'm going to do double click to anchor and then I'm going to select both and I'm going to go on edit process the over overlap and subtract now that should effectively punch that out which it has but it also sends it to the front so I'm going to send it back down to the back so I can continue editing now this bit does take a little bit of time but it's well worth it in the long run because you get a much nicer file and remember once you've created the file, you only have to actually do these steps once. I'm going to do that once more, edit and process the overlap and subtract. And again, send it to the front, so we send it to the back. And we're just going to continue doing this edit until we have got all the parts that we don't want to be cut, cut away. So we can see where we're going with the... And I've just, if that happens and I've touched the line there, if you can see, I'm just going to undo that and I'm going to restart. And if necessary, it might be necessary to just zoom in a little bit more so you've got a little bit more room to manoeuvre. So I'm just going to, trying to stay away from that brown line, I'm just going to click. And when I'm happy, I'm just clicking my mouse and moving round the shape. And I'm not going to go too far up there this time. I'm going to start coming back down like so and once we get past I'm going to flare it out again now so I've got the leaf and we're going to double click and we're going to just going to make it so that we can see the colour of the line that we're actually drawing so this is what we've got drawn and I'm going to double click to expose those nodes and I'm just going to try to move this one in a little bit so that it's not quite as close to the line so now I'm going to click that and the black, black pink one behind and I'm going to go on properties not properties sorry I'm going to edit process the overlap and subtract and that will punch that out and I'm going to close that properties box because I don't need it and I'm going to send it to back so I'm going to do this one next here so not too much this one just going to have a quick click round and double click Click on the pink background, edit, to process the overlap and subtract. So that's what I'm doing and I'm also sending it to the back. Oh, I keep doing properties instead of edit, process the uh, overlap and centre back. And then I've got a big bit down here so I'm going to deal with that now. I'm going to start here. I'm going to move round. So I'm just following the contours of the the image if you will so I'm going round past these stigma or stamen whatever they are parts of the plant the sticky bit where the pollen is and where the lovely bees go around and collecting the nectar pick up the pollen and carry out our pollination and all we all know about how important the bees are in our ecology so I'm just making sure that I've got that back one and I'm going to go edit, process the overlap and subtract. 
so that should get rid of that big bit and I'm going to centre the back and then I'm going to view fit to mat and see where we're at and there's just some more editing to do up here and here so I'm again going to zoom in and move it down to where I want to see where I'm going so I'm just going to edit these parts now so again just going to click on the edit tool and I'm going to click round go back to the start double click I'm going to double click to expose the nodes and I'm just going to hide the control point so that I can just bring that one down just a little up oh, edit just a little bit click the nodes and let's just make sure that we can click off and click that on let's just change it to a colour that we can see and we're going to click on the pink background and we're going to say subtract and we're going to centre back so all I'm doing is just editing the image so that I'm actually cutting some more of this pink away now I want to come right down to here double click oh no not double click sorry start that bit again so I'm going to come across here and down and across and up and up and then double click to anchor click the pink background and edit process the overlap and subtract that's just telling me at the top there that my movie that I'm about to upload has completed so I'm going to right click and centre back get rid of that we're going to do a little bit here so we're just going to take a little tiny triangle out here double click I'm going to double click to expose the nodes I'm going to hide the control points and we're just going to move that one in a little bit like so then I'm going to click on the that one and the pink outer edit process the overlap and subtract and we're going to centre back and we're going to do this part now so again click on I'm going to start here I'm going to come down carefully not to touch the sides where I'm actually got the file and I'm going back up the other side you can see the path that I'm taking and if you want to see what it looks like for you cut it then you can just change the colour into something like so so that's what it's going to be looking like and I'm going to select the pink background edit process the overlap and subtract and again we need to right click and send the pink area to the back and then I think there's just maybe this little bit and this little bit that we're going to deal with and again you can do as much of this or as little as you like but I think if you've got the time remember you only have to do it the once and once you've saved the file you can then um, just keep using it over and over again so although it does take a little bit of time initially you actually do have a lovely file to play with afterwards so I'm just going to edit I'm just doing the same steps over and over bringing it sending it to the back and I'm just going to do this bit and then I'm going to see where we're looking now so again I'm just taking a triangle out here double up edit undo because I don't think I anchored that properly so I'll do it once more so I'm just clicking going round in a triangle double click and then I'm going to click on the red pink bit behind edit process the overlap and subtract and I'm just going to send that to the back and then I'm going to view fit to mat and we're going to have a look where we're at so now we've got our image more or less cut out and the areas that we need out of the way so now I'm going to bring this off I'm now going to delete that one and I'm going to make a duplicate of this one so then we've got one that we can use as a cut and draw file if you will so again we need to make sure that that is a cutting file say and we're going to make sure that this one is a cutting file so what you could do now is if we just select those two I'm going to edit and I'm going to line them up centrally and vertically and then I'm going to click off and click on the pink oops I've just moved that one I'm just going to click again I'm going to click just on the pink one oops now I've brought all the nodes up and then I'm going to send it to the back and then you can see that now what I could do is get 
put that on my scan and cut get it to draw the file which is this one on top which is a drawing file or it should be get the right file selected there's the drawing file in brown the pink file is the cutting file so we've got a drawing file and if i can get hold of the pink one i'll try let's just have a look if we've got the pink one which is the cutting file so we could get the scan and cut to draw it and then cut it out so we could have got that for a card and i'm going to keep this one separate drawing file so just bringing up the properties box just checking that this is also a drawing file and this is our cutting file and i'm just going to move that off to the side and i'm going to bring on a rectangle so i'm just bringing on the rectangle and we're going to resize it to um five by seven oops seven and that's given us a five by seven and we've got it the wrong orientation so i'm just going to take it round so that's given us our rectangle so what i'm going to do now is edit and create an offset and i want to go inwards by just about half an inch so i'm going to go up to about that one will do and i need to go inward and say okay so what i've actually got now is when i position this here if you see it's going to be a little bit big for it yet so i'm going to select everything that i've just made both of the rectangles edit and i'm going to punch one out of the other one by subtracting which is just what we've been doing there i'm going to flood it with color so you can see that now we actually do have a frame and if i bring this one back in now you can see that that needs to be a little bit bigger for now so i'm going to resize the whole thing and i want it to be so that it's touching and if i just bring this one to the top so I'm just going to bring this file to the top and I'm going to make this one something other than pink so you can see where it's actually at. So what I want it to be doing is overlapping at the edges. So again, maybe just a little bit big at the minute. So I'm just going to reduce that down a little bit, not the flower, the frame. So it's the frame we're resizing when we resize, not the not the flower, because obviously if you resize the flower, it's not going to fit the draw file. So now I think I've got a decent overlap there across the board. So what I'm going to do is select that pink part and the overlap. And remember, we have got a duplicate of that pink part over here as just a cutting file. And we're going to edit and weld. So that's now effectively welded that what we've just created into position. And if we bring this now to the top, we need to make this a cutting file. It's on cutting file, that's good. We bring this into position and we can actually now set it on. I'm going to zoom in so I can see. And I'm just going to close that down. So I can now position the file using my arrow keys and it's it's even better in a way than trying to stamp it because it's going to be spot on perfect in that position so i'm just going to view fit to mat and i'm just going to temporarily group those together group i think i already temp oh no i'll let it undo that i'll just temporarily group these together group and I'm going to move this across to the centre there like that. Because as you can see, it's just slightly bigger at the moment than a 5 by 7 card. So I'm going to select everything and group it. So now all that's grouped together and I can resize. And I'm going to resize it to 6.75 by 5.75. Sorry, 4.75. So, so that will fit now with a little border on a five by seven note card so i'm going to close that down i'm going to edit and ungroup so i'm going to move that file off with its cut line and i'm going to edit and undo so now we've got our cutting file and if we zoom in we can make sure we would make sure that before we sent anything across to the scan and cut that we did have everything lined up as we wanted so you use your arrow keys like so and get it perfectly lined up where you want it to be and i think that's pretty perfect now and again checking that this one is lined up where you want it to be and that is the job done so you've got the cutting file 
and the drawing file. Let's do the drawing file. It is what we're getting here. Have I not ungrouped it yet? Sorry, we'll ungroup. That's why I'm not getting the individual files. So I'm just going to click on that one. So the drawing file. The pink one is the cutting file. And they're ready to go across to the scan and cut. So now the idea is, so if I view fit to mat, like the other one, that would go on a 5 by 7 note card. So if we bring on another rectangle and we make this one, say, 4 Point eight five by, sorry, set six point eight five by four point eight five. Say so, okay. That's going to be a bit big. What size are we at here? Oh yeah, we need to take this down. So I'm just going to. Maneuver this piece here so that it fills the. I can get it behind <coughs> the pink layer, if you will. And we can give that a colour. So you could put some colour behind, and I'm going to send that to the back. So then you get that effect of peeping through. And on my video, I put a piece of mirror card behind. You could put glitter card behind. You could do a painted watercolour background behind, or whatever. So what I did then is I got my scan and cut to draw the flower out and then I got it to cut it out and then I assembled my card. So that's what you can do. But what I also have done, and I've tried this now with a couple of files, is you can actually put in your quickie glue pen and I am going to do a, a video on this and that will be probably this file that I'll do I'll get it to draw it in quickie glue pen and I've done it using my gilding flakes and what I'm intending to have a try at is see wh whether we can actually heat emboss it with some embossing powder so that's what I'm going to be trying in my next video so that's how you create the fuchsia file I hope you have enjoyed the video. So you've got two options. You can either just get your machine to draw it and cut it out for you. And you can put it on a card as a weeping part and then put an, a, um, a greeting. And or you could do it as a panel like this with a, a drop behind. Now. I haven't done a greeting for this file and I've got a, I've got a very specific reason for it. I wanted um, my viewers that are watching to give me some ideas, what greeting would you like it in what sort of font? And I'll look at doing a greeting for you. So, like, I'd like a little bit of feedback from you. What sort of greetings would you like to see? I know it's coming up to Mother's Day for people in the UK, so I had thought about doing that one. But if you leave your ideas in the comments below, I will... Um, I'm thinking and possibly might do a video where I'm going to do multiple greetings in one file using different fonts so if you leave a message i might make that into a video for you so that you've got several greetings to choose from for all of your card making projects so that's it for now remember as usual this file will be available over on my blog at beverly town blogspot and it's free to download and use if you don't feel like you want to have a go at making it yourself by all means download my file and and go for it but i do ask that you please don't sell the files as obviously i, I spend time making these on on my on my youtube channel and i make them freely available for everyone to use if they wish so I wouldn't want, obviously, people being charged for something that they can get for free themselves. Also, if you could direct people over to my blog so they can have a look what's over there. Because I do have quite a lot of files over there now. Um, so if you're not sure, have a look yourself. Right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to hit that bell icon. And um, give me the big thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <music> Oh,